Hey, how you doing? Justin here, and today we're going to check out the most appropriately named chord on the guitar, which is the F chord. It's a bit of a tricky one for most people. Some of you will find it really easy. If you had big fat fingers and you really struggled to get your fingers in the right frets and not touch the other strings there, you might be in for an easy ride here and find the F chord relatively easy. But for most of us, it's going to be a struggle, especially if you've got small hands. I'm also going to teach you in the next lesson some cheats for F. And you should know that it's likely to take you quite a few weeks, maybe months, to develop your F chord properly. And that's just being able to play it. And then you've got to learn to change between it. And that's the reason I've kind of entered it pretty early on in grade two, because we're going to slowly be working through and kind of revisiting it. And you'll be practicing it for quite some time, uh, both the, the getting it right and getting the, the notes ringing out clearly and then being able to change to and from it. The cheats make it easy to play the songs, and it's just something we're going to learn it now. We're going to be cooking it for a little bit. There are quite a few stages to the process of learning F and different struggles that you're likely to encounter along the way. So I'm going to try and take you through as many of them as you can. If you've got problems, though, do leave them in the comments and I might make a supplemental lesson to iron out any of those difficulties and or I'll include them in later lessons where if I can see that lots of people are having the same struggles that I've been having with it when I've been learning it left handed. If you really want to watch somebody struggling with that, then do go and check out those Nitsudge lessons because uh, yeah, pretty funny. Okay, let's get to a close-up and have a look at the chord and start talking about how it's formed. Okay, so this is the F chord. Now, I've been playing F chord for, you know, 30 years or something now, and it's pretty easy for me. But I know it's not easy when I'm playing it left-handed. So let me explain what's going on. It's called a bar chord because the first finger is doing this bar across all of the strings. And the shape that we're putting in front of the bar is essentially an E chord. So if we had an E chord like that, and we re-fingered it so we were using fingers two, three, and four, like the fingers we'd use if we didn't have a first finger, it's still an E chord. If we move all of that up one fret, then something needs to replace the nut, and that's the first finger. So it's essentially pressing down all of the strings at the first fret. You can see that would be an E. If we move everything up by one semitone, we get an F. Now this is a movable chord shape, so if we move it up again, we've got F sharp. Move it up again, we've got a G. It's another way of playing G. There's G, there's G as a bar chord. But we're just going to be dealing with F to start off with. Now the first thing to realize is that the bar is not actually pressing down on all of the strings, because these three strings have got fingers on. So we don't need the bar to press down like all of them, like this. I can kind of do it. But that's really difficult for me now. The thing that we're doing, really, we're just playing the thickest string and the thinnest two strings, and the other ones are muted. I only just realized that if I play like a regular F and lift off those fingers, I'm actually only playing the thickest string, mute, 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 and the thinnest two. They're the only ones that are coming out. If I lift them off. So be aware of that, that there's a little bit of a curve in the finger. So you're really playing just the thickest and the thinnest two strings. Now the other part that's really, really helpful to understand as a beginner is it's not going down flat. Like if I try and put my finger down flat, I've got to crock my elbow right out like that. And I'm, that's using the, the pad of my finger. Now, just here, the, 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 the flat part of the finger is really, really soft. And it's not good for playing bar chords, okay? The part that we want for the bar chord is like the side of the thumb, but not exactly the side. So it's not the side side. It's like halfway between the, the front of the finger and the very edge of the finger is where you get the best pressure. You can see it even if I, I just give myself a bit of extra help here and press down really hard on my finger so you can see where it goes. And you can see, hopefully, the lines there in my first in my finger are just all of the way down on here. Now, part of the trick with this is that we all have a different shaped first finger. So in order to get a hard part of the finger that's able to press down on those thinnest two strings and that one, you need to find where your first finger is going to sit. Some of you will have to poke the first finger a little bit higher. Others will be just using the very tip of the first finger. 
Now, I don't recommend that you poke it right up over the top too much like that. I see people playing bar chords like that sometimes. And you might find that you can do it, that it kind of works, but it's going to hinder your progress later down the line when we start applying bar chords for other chord shapes, like say that chord, where the first finger really can't be like flopped over like that. Okay, so err on the side of trying to keep the tip of your first finger there, not poking over the, the top too much. But you're going to experiment a little bit with exactly where the bar sits. Now, I would recommend that you start off by putting the fingers down. So second finger that goes down second fret on the third string, third finger goes down in the third fret of the fifth string, and little finger goes down third fret of the fourth string. So start like that. If it helps, you could start by forming that E chord and then moving them all up a fret. Now we're going to put the bar down. Now, a few things are likely to happen, and again, I wouldn't have really thought about this without doing the left-handed practice, but you're probably going to find that all your fingers kind of lay down like this. They're all going to squash over. When I do it like this, the, the fingers are quite square on, and I can apply really nice pressure there, but I know even now with my left-handed practice, they're all kind of sloping over. That's okay. You want to aim for them to be kind of going straight into the strings, but that's very unlikely to happen in the short term. So don't, and don't worry about it, it's, it's gonna be fine. Everything's gonna be all right. So the fingers are gonna lay it down when you put your first finger on. And what I want you to think with the bar is that if you put it straight on and then roll it to the side, you can get a little bit of extra pressure there through the rolling. Okay, this muscle here, this one between your thumb and your fingers is gonna get pretty sore. Okay, that's part of the deal. That's why I've been so insistent all of the way through of trying to keep your thumb around the back when you played those other chords and not getting sloppy like this is because I wanted that muscle to get nice and strong. Okay, so that's an important part of that as well. Don't, don't worry if it gets sore. It's gonna, okay, for at least a few weeks, it's gonna start hurting quite a lot. So fingers down. Then with your first finger, you're gonna put it down and then try and kind of roll it onto the side. It's only, it's a very small movement. I don't know if you can see it. That's kind of flat on, that's rolling it onto the side. Okay, then just have a go at playing the notes in the chord. Now, for most people, it's the thinnest strings that people have problems with. You might find that you've got a little finger here is laying down. If little finger here is laying down a little bit too flat, it'll mute that third string. So make sure that you're using right there the tip of that, that little finger as well. And then you just want to go through the idea of your practice for the F chord. It's just going to be taking the F chord off, put down the fingers, two, three, and four. Then put the bar down, do that little rolling motion so it's slightly going onto the side. Try the notes. Same thing again. Now, it's very likely the first time you try and play it's going to sound like this. With lots of dead strings, you might get the bass note. Some of you, some of you are going to really struggle just to get the first finger to even reach to that note. Okay? You're going to find that you get a lot of tension there in your arm, trying to reach around to get the finger to go up there. The fingers are all going to be laying down. It's going to feel really awkward and your wrist will hurt. I mean, F chord is a tricky little beast. What you're looking for is a way to get your fingers on there so it feels relaxed. So one of the exercises that you wanna try is putting the fingers down, two, three, and four, then put F chord down and try and really relax your whole arm. Force your elbow to wobble around and see if you can keep your fingers in the right spot. Because for sure, one of the things that you need to figure out is your anatomy for playing that particular chord, because it's awkward, it's physically awkward. Nitsudge is still struggling. I, he, whatever, are still finding that, try, trying to find the place where it feels good. And it's something, again, a lot of beginners overlook. They worry about exactly where my thumb should be. Maybe the position of my thumb is stopping it, or maybe my bar is too low or too high, but we've all got different shaped hands. So you have to find the way that works for you. I'm tr gonna try and give you as many tips as I can on, on making it possible, but that's the biggest one, is getting the fingers into the position, trying it with the bar, see if you have a go at playing the chord, maybe, but 
Then just see where you can go if you relax your arm. Wobble it around a bit. Wobble, let your fingers kind of loosen up a bit. See if you can find a position which feels nice and then give it another strum. You're going to have to press very hard with your fingers. It's going to feel uncomfortable and it's going to feel really difficult, but that's okay at this stage. This first couple of weeks, if you can achieve an F chord at all and get it sounding good, that would be a victory. Okay, that you, you would already kind of pass that segment if you can just play it a couple of times. Lots of students have found this really, really, really difficult. It a real F chord. And it just takes practice. That's the, the thing that to remember if you're finding it a real struggle and you, you're just like, I can't do it, I can't do it, I'm not going to be able to play guitar, my journey ends here. No, don't feel that. I mean, don't I can't tell you what not to feel. Don't believe it. If you have those feelings, don't believe it because you will get there. It is just going to be about practice. For some of you, many of you, many of us, it's going to be about developing the muscles that you need to play this particular chord. Now, there is one other little hint that I want to give you just to, to stay aware of, and that is being able to use your arm as well as your fingers to be able to grip the chord. Okay, let's talk about wrist position because this is actually a pretty important part of this whole thing as well. Many beginners find that this little angle here becomes really steep, that they end up kind of making a 90 degree thing here between the, the thumb and the arm. And that's really, really bad for all the tendons that run through your wrist here, okay? So try and keep, it's not gonna be flat. It's not gonna be, you know, straight line. There is gonna be some bend there, but it shouldn't be that, okay? That's gonna hurt you. So try and bring that elbow back a little bit. Now, as part of that, you should find that you can actually play, I can play an F chord quite comfortably without using my thumb, without using this muscle, okay, which for many of you is gonna get pretty sore. I can play it without using that at all by using the pressure of my arm pulling back. So my elbow going back this way and pulling my hand onto the strings. Now, that's not the whole truth. It's not just the arm pulling back, but the arm can pull back just a little bit which can relieve a little bit of the pressure that you have to use the grip between your thumb and your first finger. So that combination of gripping here between your thumb and your first finger and just pulling back just a little bit can make a huge difference. Okay, I wanna give you one little tip about some hand rotation, which can also help getting the pressure of that first finger right. So I'm gonna use my phone for this because I don't have an overhead cam set up at the moment. So let's just, uh, get Justin's phone cam going on. Now, if you have a look at the position of the thumb here, it's not immediately behind the first finger. It's slightly further forward, more in line with the second finger. For all of us, it might be slightly different. It's okay if it's in a slightly different place. But the advantage of it being not directly behind like that and having it forward is that you get this kind of rotation possible. So moving your wrist around can help create the pressure there. So my first finger is pressing against the thumb, like rotating that way. That's where I'm putting the pressure down. Okay, so the first finger pressing, uh, you know, into the neck and the, the thumb pressing forward creates a lot more pressure because of the physiological kind of lock of the fingers than here, where I'm just, if I'm doing that, I have to squeeze that using just that muscle between my thumb and my first finger. Here I can use some of the anatomy of my hand to, to kind of create a little pressure as well, using a lever. So there's a bunch of tips on trying to get your F chord sorted out. But again, I stress, don't be worried if you find this really difficult because it is. For nearly all of you, this is going to be very, very hard and it's gonna take a little bit of perseverance. There's just gonna be a two minute session in each practice session where you're gonna work on getting your F chord. Just practicing it. Don't be frustrated if the first few times you don't really get much of a sound out of it at all. In two minutes, it'd be nice if you could get maybe a F chord kind of sounding, maybe right most of the notes kind of thing. You know, that would be great. I found that the first few days really, really difficult, uncomfortable. I'm like nine days in or something on this practice routine and I'm, I'm getting an F chord most of the time. It's a lot easier on electric guitar than it is on acoustic guitar, especially if your acoustic guitar is not set up well. If you're in the lucky position to have both an acoustic guitar and an electric guitar, I would recommend that you alternate between them. 
Now the reason for this is on the electric guitar it's a little easier to get your fingers in a nice position and to kind of figure out the mechanics of it. With the acoustic guitar you need a lot of brute strength just to be able to kind of get the notes held down. So by alternating you get the strength element from using the acoustic guitar and with the electric guitar you get the kind of uh, positional, you get the correct position easier on the electric guitar because you don't have to worry about pressing so much. So I'm with the Nitsudge thing, I'm, I'm alternating between my electric guitar and my acoustic guitar just to try and, yeah, to, to balance it, to get the best of both worlds. If you're just on an acoustic guitar, you are going to have a harder time of it, but your hand is going to end up stronger for doing the practice, so I wouldn't worry about it. If you're on an electric guitar, you'll find the chord a lot easier and you'll just be able to play the songs easier and kind of move on quicker. Uh, yeah, so like I said, if you if you happen to be lucky enough to have both an electric guitar and an acoustic guitar, I would alternate them for this practice. For your practice sessions generally, actually, you'll find that there are benefits for other parts of the practice routine as well. So if you've got any problems there, do leave questions in the comments there and I'll try and address as many of them as I can. Good luck and I'll see you for some cheats in the next lesson.